do you advance this pawn? And how do you protect it when the king comes here? Very often in endgames, the answer is to bring your king closer. The king attacks this pawn as promised. It's hard to believe white is winning, but attack the bishop. If your friend takes the pawn, he loses the bishop after king c7. King is now forced to move away and give up the only friend he had. But wait, it's never that simple with me. What happens if the bishop moves here instead? Now my friend, let me announce a forced checkmate in 18 moves. And it doesn't start the way you think. The winning move for white is to give up the pawn, just like that. The idea is that after the king takes the pawn, now we go to b1, threatening to pin the bishop. Bishop moves, and now it's just crazy. But after rook h1, the bishop is trapped. Here, the rook pins again. Here, pin. So here, check and pin. I love it. Don't get scared if your king is behind the pawn. We can still win with white, but you have to know the trick. Cutting off the king is a big mistake because you just push the pawn. King moves, push again. And when the rook tries to stop us, we bring the king. King c6 and king here. King here, we push. The rook tries to control the pawn and after king b2, well done to your friend with white. He just messed up this position because it's a draw. Now it's time to learn the trick to win with white. And it's called outflanking. Start with a check, king d4, and now the only move to win is king c6, black pushes, king b5, the pawn goes forward, king b4, one, we don't use our rook, and two, we let black push their pawn, and it's the only way to win, let's go, c2, the rook controls promotion, and after king here, white plays king b3, and the pawn is lost, and the game. Even grandmasters resign too early in their games sometimes. Tarash playing with the white pieces thought that having his king cut off from his own pawn on the fourth rank was enough of a reason to have him give up because he thought, if I push my pawn, black attacks it. I defend with my rook, he pushes, I push, and black plays the killer move, rook b8, ready to sacrifice the rook against the pawn and then promote to a queen. Do you agree with Tarash? I hope not, because he was wrong. He totally forgot something called the Deflection. Here, the crushing move is rook check, deflecting this rook from the control of this square. And after rook takes, you now can queen with a check, because the queen will go on a check frenzy, not allowing black to queen. But after queen e2 check and king b3, if the queen captures the rook, is black losing now or just a draw? A swindle in chess is not cheating. Here, the GM Marshall is a full rook down, but find incredible moves pushing this pawn. The rook moves to e7. Now he pushes, and you have three possible moves, but only one of them is good. Rook h5. But it's a big mistake after the crazy move. Rook h6. If you take it, another pawn move. Rook takes pawn is a draw. And if you try rook e1 to checkmate, I queen check the rook is forced to take boom stalemate again what about rook d8 another crazy move rook on g6 if he takes you promote to a queen he takes it and b5 again but what if he moves his king instead slide the rook rook here we promote and when the rook takes we crush his dream of winning with b5 again with the same stalemate on the next move why would the Grandmaster blunder this move? Did he not know that in rook endgames, the defending side must have his rook on the long side of the board? But now, at least you do know. The reason being that this rook needs to be able to give as many side checks as possible when needed. Check, king a3, the king goes forward, and now another blunder. Rook takes pawn, too greedy, black pushes, the rook goes back, rook g7, and now the decisive mistake, king a2 deserves two question marks because now the blacking advances and his rook is chained to the A file. Because if the rook moves, checkmate, king moves, you push, king comes back, rook b7, and now all you have to do is control the possible checks on this file, playing rook d7. Rook goes back, and now red carpet for this pawn, and no possible checks for white. The king tries his luck, we just push, and after rook here, check, the king goes to bed, and now what's the winning move for black? 
It's hard to believe looking at this beautiful night in the center, but here, Black is winning thanks to a beautiful Tsukzvong trick. Start with the deviation. This pawn cannot take, otherwise the knight is gone. White moves his king. Now you simply take the pawn, and when the king takes, you had to see that this knight is stuck, because if he moves, this pawn is gone. So the knight cannot move, but also the king, who's tied to the defense of the knight. So all we have to do is create a beautiful Tsukzvong and lose a tempo. You're telling your friend, you have no good move next, so I pass. Your turn. And what do you do now? He moves his knight, this pawn is gone, he tries pushing, but we simply push as well, blocking this square. The knight moves, and we simply attack the second pawn. That cannot be defended. And I believe you're able to win this endgame with two protected pass pawns, right? 